Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to be applying some power to that dreadful unfused 10 amp allegedly rated lead, and that's the one with that uh, illegal uh, UK style plug on the end and so on that we've seen in a previous video. And what we've got here is basically the test setup we're going to use, and we've actually got a normal lead plugged in this at the moment, so just have a closer look here. So power comes in there on that blue wire there or cable at the back. We've got the socket outlet there, and that's where we're going to plug in the uh, doubtful lead. Meters here we've got, so current on the left there on the clamp meter, and that's current for the whole circuit. It's got that loop of grey wire coming out of the test block there. And then we've got two multimeters here. The one on the left is the input voltage, and then the one on the right there is the voltage at the load. And the load in the question in this case plugs into this uh, adapter sort of thing here that I've made, and then the wire goes down onto the floor, and it's that uh, silver coloured heater that we've seen in a number of previous videos. And that has a couple of settings, and one of which is about 3.5 amps, the other one is around 6. And this uh, connector here, that we're just holding there, that's where we're going to plug the other end of our lead in, and then so the other one just goes in the socket outlet over the back there. Now to start with, we're going to use a normal lead, that's the one I'm just holding here, I'm just plugging back in. And this is a perfectly normal compliant one, so uh, just get a sort of baseline as to what will happen with a proper wire. So power's just turned on there. We can see the voltage on the left meter is 241, or just around 242 there. And on the right meter it's 241. So in terms of voltage drop between the source at the back there and the load at the front, we're only getting a voltage drop of around 1 volt, so nothing excessive there at all. And current we see on the clamp meter is around 3.3 amps, so again nothing too excessive there. And this is pretty much you want. You want the voltage drop in the lead to be as low as possible, and that's pretty much what we've got there. Now we'll just change to the uh, dodgy and defective one, and you can see immediately that it looks uh, much physically smaller, and that say plugs into the other outlet there. So uh, this is obviously uh, going to fare rather badly, so we'll just get it uh, all in shot there. This is only about a one metre long lead as well, so uh, fairly similar to the other one. And we'll see what the voltage drop is on this one. And I've got a timer in the front here, so we'll set that going as well, so I can obviously run this over a longer period. So we'll start the timer going. Now let's count up in the uh, seconds and minutes there, and then we'll connect up the power and see what we've got. Now of course the input voltage is pretty much what we had before, it's around 242 there, and it does fluctuate a bit as that's quite normal. But we see that the output voltage at the load is only about 234, so we've got a considerable voltage drop there. And actually going around to 233 now, and that's in the order of sort of 9 volts difference. So uh, approximately 10 times greater than we had on that other lead, coming to still only about 3.2 amps. So again, this is well within the alleged 10 amp rating of this thing, and even if this was uh, supposed to be the 0.5 square millimetre cable, again, this is still within the rating of that. Now, uh, current and things are fairly stable there, and the lead, of course, uh, is going to be heating up here, and we'll leave this going for a few minutes, and then we'll uh, see what happens after that. Now this sped up section here we can see that the lead itself is actually moving as the plastic softens and deforms. Now we don't have a temperature thing on this but it's fairly obvious that that's getting excessively warm even at a current of only around 3.2 amps. And we'll also notice that the current is actually dropping off slowly and say on previously had around 3.3 amps but in this case it's only about 3.2 mainly due to the excessive resistance in the lead. Now at about the five minute mark here, and uh, again the voltage drop is still around that sort of nine volt level, so sort of 241 or 242 almost, and it's 232 on the actual end of it. And you see the lead has uh, pretty much flattened out onto the piece of plywood there, as it's obviously got rather warm and uh, softened away. So I'll just turn the power off there, just checking that. That is actually hot to the touch, certainly not something you're going to want to uh, hold on for, for very long. Of course it's cooling down rather quickly now. The power is being disconnected, but uh, yeah, that's certainly in the sort of hot range. And if you pick it up there, it's incredibly flexible and bendy, and it sort of turned to this sort of rubbery uh, type consistency. And it's also giving off that sort of characteristic odour of hot melting plastic, which uh, of course if you've spelt any kind of electrical equipment overheating, then that's exactly what it smells like now. So I say it's cooling off quite rapidly now, but it's still uh, fairly warm to hold there. So what we're going to do now is just kind of put it back in the uh, similar kind of arrangement, but we're going to turn the heater up to its higher power setting, and then we'll see what happens with that. 
So just start the timer going uh, once again, and uh, this time so the heater will be more power going through. So turn on the voltage, and then we'll see the voltage coming in again, 241 or so. Outgoing voltage is around 224, and the current there we see is around 6.3 amps. And note the current is also dropping because, of course, the uh, thing has a such a high resistance and it's heating up. The resistance, of course, is increasing. So let's say voltage drop uh, is considerably more now because we're putting more current through. It's approaching in the region of 20 volts. And we can see that the cable itself is softening away considerably. So we'll just leave this going and then we'll uh, see what happens to this one. Now just coming up to the two minute mark and you see the cable is actually now smoking despite the fact it's only about 6.2 amps and if you're wearing headphones this might be a good time to turn down the volume or remove them. So you see there it's actually faulted on a particular point there and just put that disgusting sooty mess across the plywood and you see that the voltage thing has gone to zero because an upstream device has disconnected in this case but uh, certainly uh, that only took a couple of minutes for it to completely fail and if you look at the rest of the flex there it's all sort of deformed and gone into a horrible shape even where it hasn't actually obviously burnt through and shorted out. Now here's a look at it afterwards it's cooled down here see the whole thing is sort of deformed and it's a sort of twisty style and again at this end you see the extensive melting where it's of course uh, shorted out and caused a fault between the various conductors and as I say even the parts that weren't actually melted together are in a sort of twisted up uh, horrible state and this whole thing if you actually uh, get hold of it it's sort of a crunchy type of effect along the whole length of the flex so the entire thing is completely ruined and going a bit closer there you see it's just totally melted through purely from the two bits which were just resting on top of each other. Now this is what we've got left and this one is the one we used initially, the sort of correct one and say so nothing uh, too unsurprising about that one. This uh, one is actually marked as a 0.75 millimeter squared so not exactly a hugely sizable one. And then here's the uh, dodgy and uh, certainly not recommended version and if we put the two together here we can see that this is the uh, suspicious one and it's not uh, massively smaller in appearance externally and that's, yeah, that's kind of what you expect with this type of thing so it's probably the case that uh, the uh, amount of insulation in this has been increased to give it a sort of more normal appearance now as you can see this is in a right state and I say it's gone rather crunchy inside so if I put it into the microphone you should be able to hear the horrible noise when I actually flex it So it's not just the piece that's melted, the whole length is completely destroyed. So let's cut into this, see what we can find inside. Now we see the inner conductors there, so uh, let's just slice in with a knife and have a closer look. And this is what we've got now got the three conductors there but they're rather strange colours. Now they're a bit sort of melted together but we can see we've got a blue one, one that's sort of almost red and then on this side a sort of grey coloured one here and they've all sort of fused together basically into a uh, single piece here. Of course not surprising from the excessive heat that was applied. Very very thin metal wires inside there so almost uh, non-existent just see a few odd strands within there so clearly nowhere near the required amount of copper and again of course that's not too surprising because we kind of knew that anyway but uh, yeah so sort of red blue and a sort of a grey colour are the choices for this one so none of those comply I mean the blue theoretically might be neutral but it uh, should be brown for the line and green and yellow for the uh, earth there but uh, anyway total uh, disaster in that regard as for these wires, well they don't appear to be uh, steel, so they're probably copper clad aluminium and they're say, of the thinnest possible style. 
Now in the previous video a number of people rushed to the defence of this piece of junk and uh, suggested there could be a fuse concealed or hidden within. Of course that's utter nonsense because there is no fuse in this. So let's just see what we've got here. Maybe we'll just strip these wires here, try and strip the whole lot in bulk because we might as well. That's what's sort of left of the inner. And I've uh, got a metre here just for continuity. And we've got the two leads there so it connects together like that. I'm going to try and just grip onto the strands here. Now if there was any kind of fuse in this it should have certainly blown with that rather substantial fault current there which in the previous uh, segment there that actually was disconnected by a 32 amp circuit breaker. That was actually a type C circuit breaker as well. Now uh, if there was a fuse in here it surely would have blown. So let's see what continues between there and here. So let's try on the uh, pin here. Yeah, so we've got continuity based on all three pins, so there's absolutely no fuse here. Still measuring around 1 ohm there, which is of course uh, rather high. So uh, obviously no fuse included, and even if there was, it clearly hasn't done its job because the whole point of a fuse is it will blow before the upstream circuit breaker, and clearly it didn't in this case. Now of course we have got some tools here to pry into this piece of junk, and uh, therefore that's exactly what we're going to do. I don't know what kind of plastic this is made of, let's just uh, have a look here. It's certainly the uh, rubbery kind, as you can see there. That's not particularly unusual for this type of moulded plug, however. I personally prefer the uh, solid, actual Bakelite style ones, but uh, most of these moulded on ones are of course made of this style of stuff, because that's what you can actually mould fairly easily. And uh, as usual it's the uh, fairly poor quality exterior there, so let's just uh, pull this apart and then see what we can find contained inside. So as you can see there the plastic parts, the earth one of course shouldn't be there. All that's inside is just this little post of some kind of metal there. That one just sheared off because it was obviously a lot of force applied. They're not apparently uh, attracted to the magnet there and neither is anything else in the vicinity of the actual plug itself. So. Those are not copper, obviously, from the appearance of them. They're probably some kind of aluminium or some kind of other low-grade metal, just uh, recycled cans or something else, who knows what. Now let it uh, breaks off very easily, so it's a fairly brittle material. That one apparently uh, not as brittle as the others, so yeah, not even consistent uh, within itself. Now just prying off the rubbery overmould on this. And we can see inside it's a harder plastic core, which is fairly typical of this sort of moulded plug. Basically it's an inner piece which holds the pins and the conductors, and then they're supposedly crimped on, although in this case who knows what was actually done. And then this sort of outer covering is injection moulded over the top. And the whole point of these moulded plugs is they're used primarily because they're cheaper and quicker to assemble, they're not used because they're safer, even with the correct ones. It's purely a cost-saving exercise because a machine can automatically crimp these down and mould the thing over the top far quicker than a human could obviously get a normal plug and actually wire the thing up. So it's done for cheapness and speed of manufacture, and that is the only reason. So we're just sort of chewing into this, we can see the outer softer material pulls away from the inner form. And in terms of fuses, well, we're not seeing anything else in here because, of course, we already know there isn't one. But as some people will no doubt complain, we're going to go all the way in here until we've got nothing left. Now I've got most of the way in, and we can see there the pink or red conductor there just going straight onto the terminal. The uh, earth one has busted off, and then over here it's going to be the same deal. So as you see there, no fuse whatsoever. It's just the central plastic piece three wires tacked on and then over moulded with whatever material that is over the top. So of course no fuse and uh, also we already knew that but uh, there you have it completely fuseless and of course no effort was made to even bother complying with the relevant standard. This thing is purely made down to the lowest possible price. Those making it are also fully aware of the complete non-compliance of this thing and how dangerous it is so they should hang their heads in shame for 
you've been considering to manufacture such a pile of junk. So there's the top there, and we can see it's just the wires go through basically onto the three terminals, and then that is all you've got. This is the plug from the other end, and you can see that uh, although it's the right kind of shape in general, one thing that's conspicuous by its absence, there was no approval markings or anything else on this, it's totally blank all the way around. Only markings we've got are on the end here with the line neutral and earth markings. Now I'll just compare that to this other one that uh, we obviously used before, and we can see this one on the back here, absolutely covered in various approval markings and various other information there. And again, it's got some more on the end as well, so uh, clearly that's a totally different deal. Whether this is the right kind of shape or not, I mean, it's certainly in the general size of things, but again, nothing uh, quality about that. In terms of the contacts, well, they are attracted to the magnet, so uh, presumably some kind of ferrous material in there. Certainly not uh, what you would expect. And just completely, this, this is the other one, and uh, literally no attraction there whatsoever, pretty much as you'd expect. Now we can see here this is the part that basically melted through where the fault occurred, and so it's just blown all those thin conductors completely apart. Nothing left at all, and then the rest is this horrible scrunchy, crunchy mess. And there's the other part where it melted through, and of course it's caused a fault probably between all three of the conductors, and uh, that is the end of that. So as expected, the thing is a complete pile of junk inside, and that is actually all three of the conductors. Just pulled the cable apart there, and as you can see there's pretty much none of it. It's as thin as hair, and uh, so that's all three of them. Shoved together, you might get somewhere near the 05 millimeters, considering all three of them are there. But the uh, trick there, of course, is they've bulked up the insulation to make it appear as if there's more substance in it, but in reality it's 99% insulation, and uh, the little what's left is some kind of copper-coated aluminium or something, so uh, definitely no use for anything. So that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.